Hey guys, so in today's episode we're going to be talking about adding manual controls to your radiator fan as well as your engine bay fan. Um, this is geared towards my particular car, the Toyota MR2, so yours may only have the radiator fan because your engine's in the front, um, but because my engine is in the rear it has an engine bay fan as well. And what we might want to do is add manual controls to control these fans um, separate from the computer. So the first thing we need to do is get a hold of our electrical wiring diagram book for your particular model. And we flip to the page. Um, first, um, for the MR2, the engine compartment cooling fan. Um, so let's just take a look here in greater detail. And what we can see here when we look at, look at the um, wiring diagram is that there's a, there is a computer controlling um, you know this whether this fan is on or off depending on the temperature in the engine bay and there's a temperature sensor in the loop here for this computer this temperature sensor is mounted in the engine bay and what happens is if the temperature reaches a certain level the, the fan will turn on until it goes below a threshold now what we can do is add a manual disconnect switch to this temperature sensor circuit and this what, what this does is it tells the computer you know, you're seeing infinity resistance when I disconnect it. That means the engine bay is really, really hot because this is, this is essentially a resistor. And then that manually controls, you know, turns on the engine bay fan. And this is for cases where, you know, I'm idling, I'm in traffic, and maybe I'm burning a little bit of oil. Um, after my engine swap, my engine's running a little bit rough. And that's just starting to smell, and I want to clean that out of the engine bay so I can manually turn on the fan if I want to. The next one here is the um, radiator fan. So we switched to the page that has the radiator fan and we take a look. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because you know if your system has AC as well, um, there's something called an AC amplifier, which is basically the computer for this circuit, for the air conditioning, for the radiator, and that thing, kind of thing like that. So we actually see here is, um, let's just zoom in here a little bit more. There's a radiator fan water temperature sensor. And so this is the same thing as the engine bay fan sensor. Um, it's the thermistor, so a thermally controlled resistor, which measures the temperature in the radiator. It's actually screwed into the radiator. and. Um, if we manually disconnect this with a switch, we're sending infinity resistance to this computer, and this is telling the computer to turn on the radiator fan. You know, it's seeing infinity resistance, the radiator coolant must be really, really hot, we can manually control this. And this is just for cases where it's, you know, say I'm idling in traffic again, and what if this AC amplifier computer breaks? What if I start to overheat? What if I'm a little bit uncomfortable with my coolant temperatures? Well, I can manually control this radiator fan to try and bring those temperatures back down by just adding a simple switch to this circuit. So now that we've identified, you know, which wires are controlling these te uh, temperature sensors, we can actually go ahead and install those manual switches and have that manual control over um, those fans. Now, just before we go ahead and take a look at the ones that I've installed, I just want to show you what one of these thermistors looks like. So this is one I actually pulled off an old 4AG engine. And it's just a brass housing with a thermally controlled resistor inside here. So that means the resistance of that resistor changes with temperature. So this actually screws into, in this case, to the radiator. And it measures the coolant temperature in the radiator. Um, in a previous video, when I talked about aftermarket gauges. Um, you can screw these pretty much anywhere in the cooling system and measure coolant temperature anywhere, or even oil temperature. So these are really handy to have. And this is also the same thing that's in the engine bay for the engine bay fan. It's just not screwed into anything now, it's just sort of being mounted and measuring the, the temperature of the air. So now that we know what, what these look like, you know, we have the wiring diagrams, we know which wires to cut, let's go add those manual switches and show you the operation of these manual controls for these fans. So on the Toyota MR2, um, the engine's in the, in the middle of the car and the radiator's up front. 
So here we have the radiator. Um, I've added an aftermarket Spal electric fan, a little bit slimmer and lighter than the original uh, fans. And if we take a look here on the driver's side, this is the thermistor, which is screwed into the radiator, which measures the coolant temperature. So you can see here um, the wire colors match up with our wiring diagram. And we trace the wire through the wall here to this loom. And what I've done is cut one of those wires and added a manual switch which follows the loom and goes into the interior compartment to a manual switch. So I can actually manually disconnect this um, temperature sensor instead of actually having to physically pull this out. So while I'm driving I can turn the fan on and off whenever I want. So that's the first one. Now let's go to the back of the car and look at the engine bay fan. So, for um, controlling the temperature, we have an, a second thermistor. Um, we can see it here just resting up against um, one of the coolant lines. And it's on the exhaust side of the engine. This is the hotter side of the engine, obviously, because the exhaust is coming out. And again, we have the two wires coming out. Now, this one is going to a, the, the computer located in the trunk uh, for controlling, you know, when that fan turns on. If we take a look at the fan, I've added a, an aftermarket spell fan as well. And so this is the fan that we're controlling when we manually disconnect. So all we need to do is cut one of the wires that goes to this sensor and then run those two wires to a switch in the interior of the cabin. So through the firewall here and into the interior. So if we take a look, At the gauges, or at the switches here, we have two, one for engine fan and one for radiator fan. And so let me go get my keys. Actually, I have them on me right now. And we can go ahead and give this a try. So the car is cold. The fans would not run right now by themselves. But because we have these switches, The first one here, let's turn on the engine fan. I don't know if you can hear that. The engine fan is now running. When I switch that back, we now have regular operation. The fan is controlled by the computer, by the temperature sensor. But when I manually disconnect this, I'm forcing the fan to turn on because I'm basically telling the computer, you know, you have a really hot engine bay. The next one here is the radiator fan. So the radiator fan is off right now. Um, it wouldn't turn on because the coolant is very cold. But if I want to, you can hear it turning on now. and then I can turn it back off. So, again, I've forced the radiator fan to turn on by telling the computer you have a really hot coolant temperature, even though I don't, but I'm forcing that, that signal. Um, so these are just little easy things you can add to your system. Again, you only need switches and some wire. You just need to know which wires to cut, but these are really sort of cool little things you can add to have control over every aspect of your car. And again, I'm not sacrificing the, you know, the OEM capability. The computers are still operating as normal when these are, are um, not being activated. But I have the capability to manually force them to turn on if I ever, ever so desire. So as always, good luck and have fun.